right. We're um not putting fan art on this one either because I'll it'll make sense in a second and if you're on youtube you already know because you've looked at the title of the video at least i'm assuming you looked at the title of the video that'd be really weird to click on a video without looking at the title first just because a creator like uploaded something i guess if that creator's me i'm not super upset that you did that but um let's just go ahead and talk about this one apparently israel actually has like actual camps now for, for people who were Palestinian. You know, that thing that they shouldn't be doing because they should know better because, you know, the Holocaust. But apparently we have actual whistleblowers uh, who are talking about this shit now, so we've got some confirmations. We. This is from CNN of all places too, not even a fringe outlet. Strapped down, blindfolded, held in diapers, Israeli whistleblowers detail abuse of Palestinians in shadowy detention center. At a military base that now doubles as a detention center in Israel's Negev desert, an Israeli working at the facility snapped two photographs of a scene that he says continues to haunt him. Rows of men in gray track suits are seen sitting in pap on paper-thin mattresses, ring-fenced by barbed wire. All appear blindfolded, and their heads are hanging heavy under the glare of floodlights. A putrid stench fills the air, and the room hummed with the men's murmurs. The Israeli who was at the facility told CNN. Forbidden from speaking to each other, the detainees mumbled to themselves. We were not allowed to move. They should sit upright. They're not allowed to talk. Not allowed to peek under their blindfold. Guards were instructed to scream Uskat, shut up in Arabic, and told to pick out people that were problematic and punish them. So there's our scene for everyone. You know, that thing that you would think Israel wouldn't be doing because of the history of it happening uh, to, the, to the Jewish people, and that yeah, for, for some fucking reason, we seem to be here and doing it again. That's just, that's why. Uh, those aren't mattresses, those are fucking sheets, and even sheets is being generous. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. That's why I'm not super comfortable attaching fan art to something like this. CNN spoke to three of Israeli whistleblowers who worked at the desert camp, which holds Palestinians detained during Israel's invasion of Gaza. All spoke out at risk of legal repercussions and reprisals from groups supportive of Israel's hardline policies in Gaza. They paint a picture of a facilities where doctors sometimes amputated prisoners' limbs due to injuries sustained from constant handcuffing. Constant. What? Why does it feel like a really fucked up kind of generational trauma? I, I refuse to even give it that kind of credence. Jesus barking Christ. That is... How do you have somebody handcuffed for so long you have to amputate a limb? So this is why I will go on record to say whether or not we are willing to use the word genocide to describe the thing that is happening to the people of Palestine. Uh, I'm willing to use that word. I'm going to go ahead and say right now that uh, at the very least, this is ridiculously inhumane. And I don't know if the UN actually had any teeth, it would do something about it. Jesus fucking Christ. Where the air is filled with the smell of neglected wounds that were left to rot. The medics who performed all of the amputations were all interns who had no idea what the fuck they were doing. We were told they were not allowed to move. They should sit up right. They're not allowed to talk, not allowed to peek into the blindfold. Man, I can't wait for somebody in my comment section to talk about this and be like, oh my God, look, you're the anti-Semite. Dude, shut the fuck up. But I've already seen those comments. You know what, actually? I'm curious. Can I find one of those in a reasonable amount of time on that last 
uh, video that I did on the Israel Hamas shit? Let's see here. Let's go ahead and see here. Do to do to do to do to do. Stuff from a year ago. I can't find specifically anti Semitic. And the YouTube search filters are not good enough otherwise. Well, I guess I won't be finding those today. Not in the middle of a video. <clears throat> Red Joker says, use Control F. Yeah, Control F where? You know, videos don't load all comments all at the same time. And neither does YouTube's uh, actual comment section on the studio side. And I have to type in the exact phrase they used. Otherwise, it doesn't come up right. So if somebody misspells something even a little bit, fine, let me scroll and get back to you. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. According to the accounts, the facility, some 18 miles from the Gaza frontier, is split into two parts. Enclosures where around 70 Palestinian detainees from Gaza are placed under ext uh, extreme physical restraint, and a field hospital where wounded detainees are strapped to their beds, wearing diapers, and fed through straws. That's not how you treat human beings. That's not how you treat human beings at all. Looking here, it says they stripped them down of anything that resembles human beings, said one whistleblower who worked as a medic in the uh, facility's field hospital. The beatings were not done to gather intelligence. They were done out of revenge, said another whistleblower. It was punishment for what they, the Palestinians, did on October 7th and punishment for behavior in the camp. Ah, yes, the, the, famously every Palestinian was responsible for October 7th. Not Hamas, not, you know, the actual organization that took credit for and carried it out. No, 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 no. Every civilian, they are the ones who did it. I, uh, I'm glad this is the last topic I'm doing today. Because I think I'm going to have to go fucking throw up after this. Responding to CNN's request for comment on all of the allegations made in this report, the Israeli military, known as the IDF, said in a statement, <clears throat> The IDF ensures proper conduct towards the detainees in custody. Any allegations of misconduct by IDF soldiers is examined and dealt with accordingly. In appropriate cases, MPCID, Military Police Criminal Investigations Division's investigations, are opened up when there is suspicion of misconduct justifying such action. Ah, yes, the internal review. The most trusted kind of review for any company and or military to do. Ah, our organization, uh, or we decided to investigate ourselves, and we found that we were not guilty of any crimes. You know, the usual. It says detainees are handcuffs based on their risk level and health status. Indicates uh, incidents of unlawful handcuffing are not known to the authorities, but apparently they're known well enough by a bunch of people who are talking to CNN. Okay. The IDF did not directly deny accounts of people being stripped of their clothing or held in diapers. Instead, the Israeli military said that the detainees are given back their clothing once the IDF has determined they pose no security risk. Well, that's vague. Reports of abuse at the uh, Sadi Taiman, at Sadi Taiman, and I'm saying that wrong, I know I am, have already surfaced in Israeli and Arab media after an outcry from Israeli and Palestinian rights groups over conditions there. But this rare testimony from Israelis working at the facility sheds further light on Israel's conduct as it wages war on Gaza with fresh allegations of mistreatment. It also casts more doubt on the Israeli government's repeated assertions that it acts in accordance with accepted international practices and law. Yeah, I feel like the diapers are definitely going a bit overboard. You know, and the hacking off of limbs. And the everything, the, the literal everything. 
CNN has requested permission from the Israeli military to access the time and base. Last month, a CNN team covered a small protest outside its main gate, staged by Israeli activists demanding the closure of the facility. Israeli security forces questioned the team for around 30 minutes there, demanding to see footage taken by CNN's photojournalist. Israel often subjects reporters, even foreign journalists, to military censorship on security issues. The Israeli military has acknowledged partially converting three different military facilities into detention camps for Palestinian detainees from Gaza since the Hamas-led October 7th attack on Israel, in which Israel authorities say about 1,200 were killed and over 250 were abducted. The subsequent Israeli offense on Gaza has killed nearly 35,000 people. We already covered that. The camps are part of the infrastructure of Israel's unlawful combatants law, an amended legislation passed by the Knesset last December that expanded the military's authority to disdain suspected militants. The law permits the military to detain people for 45 days without an arrest warrant, after which they must be transferred to the Israeli formal prison system, where over 9,000 Palestinians are being held in conditions that rights group have said drastically deteriorated since October 7th. Two Palestinian prisoners associated last year or last week said that last week 18 Palestinians, including leading Gaza surgeon Dr. Ad, uh, Adna al Bursh, had died in Israeli custody over the course of the war. Man, how would your prisoners randomly fucking die? Is it possibly because they're all being mistreated? That's probably why. That, that's probably the exact reason why. The military detention camps, where the number of inmates is unknown, serves as a filtration point during the arrest period mandated by the unlawful combatants law. After their detention in the camps, those with suspected Hamas links are transferred to the IPS, while those whose militant ties have been ruled out are released back to Gaza. Ah, yes, back to the Gaza Strip, the bombed Gaza Strip, the place where their homes are no longer anything but rubble in a dream. That place. Can't possibly think of anywhere else for them to go. That might be a little less corpsey. Jesus balls. CNN interviewed over a dozen former Gazan detainees who appear to have been released from those camps. They said they could not determine where they were held because they were blindfolded through most of their detention and cut off from the outside world. But the details of their accounts tally with those of the whistleblowers. We looked forward to the night so we could sleep. Then we looked forward to the morning in hopes that our situation might change, said Dr. Mohammed al ran recalling his detainment at a uh, military facility where he said he endured desert temperatures, swinging from heat of the day to the chill of the night. CNN interviewed him outside Gaza last month. al ran a Palestinian who holds Bosnian citizenship, headed the surgical unit at Northern Gaza's Indonesian hospital, one of the first to be shut down and raided as Israel carried out its aerial, ground, and naval offensive. He was arrested on December 18th, he said, outside Gaza City Al-Ali Baptist Hospital, where he had been working for three days after fleeing his hospital in the heavily bombarded north. He was stripped down to his underwear, blindfolded, and his wrists were tied, and then dumped on the back of a truck, where he said the near-naked detainees were piled on top of one another as they were shuttled to a detention camp in the middle of the desert. Man, that sounds a lot like something else that happened in history with trains and taking a whole bunch of people packed tightly together in sardine can situations into camps you know deep that's that's such a that's such a weird description of the situation it sounds so close to something else that happened historically it's just so strange i can't put my finger on what the fuck it was the details in his account are consistent with those of dozens of others collected by CNN recounting the conditions of arrest in Gaza. His account is also supported by numerous images depicting mass arrests public, uh, published on social media profiles belonging to the Israeli soldiers. Many of those images show captive Gazans, their wrists or ankles tied by cables, in their underwear and blindfolded. Ah! Hey, Mitt Romney, I think I figured out exactly why Israel's losing the information battle right now. I figured out why your TikTok ban uh, is going through the way it is. It's, it's trying to stop shit like this, I guess. 
Alran was held in a military detention center for 44 days. He said our days were filled with prayer, tears, and supplication. This eased our agony. We cried and cried and cried. We cried for ourselves, for our nation, for our community, and for our loved ones. We cried about everything that crossed our minds. A week into his imprisonment, the detention camp's authorities ordered him to act as an intermediary between the guards and the prisoners, a role known as a shawish, a supervisor. According to Israeli whistleblowers, a Shawish is normally a prisoner who has been cleared of suspected links to Hamas after interrogation. The Israeli military denied holding detainees unnecessarily or using them for translation purposes. They said if there's no reason for continued detention, the detainees are released back to Gaza. Ah, yes. Except literally all of the people who you have actually detained are saying that's not what the fuck happened to them. It's funny how policies on paper and policies in practice are often not followed. However, whistleblower and detainee accounts, particularly pertaining to Shawish, cast doubt on the IDF's depiction of its clearing process. Al Rand says that he served as Shawish for several weeks after he was cleared of Hamas links. Whistleblowers also said that this absolved Shawish, uh, the absolved Shawish served as intermediaries for some time. They are typically proficient in Hebrew, according to the eyewitnesses, enabling them to communicate to guards in uh, guards' orders to the rest of the prisoners in Arabic. For that, Al Ran said he was given a special privilege. His blindfold was removed. He said that this was another kind of hell. Part of my torture was being able to see how people were tortured. At first, you couldn't see. You couldn't see the torture, the vengeance, the oppression. When they removed my blindfold, I could see the extent of the humiliation and abasement. I could see the extent to which they saw us not as human beings, but as animals. Anubian keeps saying none of them are released in the chat, but I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, CNM was talking to a person who was released. So I, I hate to tell you that you're wrong, but but you are. Not enough of them are released, obviously. And those of them who are in containment are being treated horribly, obviously. But no, some of them, not enough, but some of them are getting released. Ay, ay, ay. Ay. Here is a leaked photograph of an enclosure where detainees in gray tracksuits are seen blindfolded and sitting on paper-thin mattresses. Here they are. Again, uh, those are not mattresses. That that that's that is that is nothing. There is nothing there between them and the ground. I know there's a a cloth there. That's not enough. Jesus fucking Christ. Al Ren's account of the forms of punishment he saw were corroborated by the whistleblowers who spoke with CNN. A prisoner who committed an offense such as speaking to another would be ordered to raise up his arms above his head for an hour. The prisoner's hands would sometimes be zip-tied to a fence to ensure that he did not come out of the stress position. What the fuck? Why? Wh why? Wh what? H how? How is that humane? How is that an okay thing to do? How is that even remotely all right for a military to do in any situation to people who they do not fucking know are guilty of jack shit? That's just, yeah, it's just torture. For those who repeatedly breach the prohibition on speaking and moving, you know, two things human beings need to do for their own sanity, the punishments became more severe. Israeli guards would sometimes take a prisoner to an area outside the enclosure and beat him aggressively. According to two whistleblowers in al Ran, a whistleblower who worked as a guard who said that he saw a man emerge from a beating with his teeth and some bones apparently broken. Hey you! No more speaking! I'm going to break your toes! But why? Why is that necessary? In what world is any of that fucking necessary? And again, it's not even for any purpose. It's just for fucking vengeance against people who might not have even done anything. That whistleblower in Al Rand also described a routine search where the guards would unleash large dogs on sleeping detainees, lobbing a sound grenade at the enclosure as troops barged in. What? What? 
they're just just seeking dogs on them randomly in the middle of the night they, they can't even sleep while we were cabled, they unleashed the dogs that would move between us and trample over us. You'd be lying on your belly, your face pressed against the ground. You can't move, and they're moving above you. I'm gonna be fucking ill. The same whistleblower recounted the search in the same harrowing detail, said it was a special unit of the military police that did the so-called search, but really it was just an excuse to hit them. It was a terrifying situation. There was a lot of screaming and dogs barking. Whistleblower accounts portrayed a different kind of horror at the Time and Field Hospital. They said what I felt I was dealing with those patients is an I what I felt when I was dealing with those patients is an idea of total vulnerability. If you imagine yourself being unable to move, unable to see what's going on and being completely naked, that leaves you completely exposed. I think that's something that borders on if not crosses to psychological torture. Another whistleblower said that he was ordered to perform medical procedures on the Palestinian detainees for which he was not qualified. I was asked to learn how to do things on the patients, performing minor medical procedures that are totally outside my expertise and without anesthesia. If they complained about the pain, they would be given uh, paracetamol. Oh, uh, so acetaminophen. Just being there felt like being complicit in abuse. And see the model scene has recreated based on eyewitnesses. That looks completely inhumane. The same whistleblower also said he witnessed an amputation performed on a man who had sustained injuries caused by the constant zip tying of his wrist. The account tallied with details on a letter authored by a doctor working uh, in April. From the first days of the medical facility's operation until today, I have faced severe ethical dilemmas, the letter addressed to Israeli's Attorney General said, and its Health and Defense ministry, uh, Ministries as well. More than that, I am writing this letter to warn you that the facility's operations do not comply with a single section among those uh, dealing with health and the in, in the incarceration of unlawful combatants law. An IDF spokesperson denied the allegations reported in the written statement by uh, Haaretz to CNN at the time, saying that the medical procedures were conducted with extreme care and in accordance with Israeli and international law. The spokesperson added that the handcuffing of the detainees was done in accordance with procedures, their health conditions, and the level of danger posed by them, and that any allegations of violence would be examined. So the basic... This is literally the stuff that you would give as vagary. This is the stuff you give as a vague response to any kind of criticism of this kind of depravity. Whistleblowers said the medical team were told to refrain from signing medical documents corroborating previous reports by rights groups for the physics of human rights in Israel. The PHRI report released in April warned of a serious concern that anonymity is employed to prevent the possibility of investigations or complaints regarding breaches of medical ethics and professionalism. You learned the wrong lesson from Nuremberg, you twat! He said you don't sign anything and there is no verification of authority. It is a paradise for interns because it's like you can do whatever you want. Last Wednesday, the Israeli Supreme Court held a hearing in response to a petition brought forward by the Israeli rights group Hakmadad uh, Hamaked to reveal the location of a Palestinian X-ray det uh, technician detained from Nasser Hospital in southern Gaza in February. It was the first court session of its kind since October 7th. Israel's highest court had previously rejected writs of habeas corpus filed on behalf of dozens of Palestinians from Gaza held in unknown locations. The disappearances allows for atrocities that we've been hearing about to happen. An Israeli human rights lawyer and executive director of the Public Committee Health said that uh, in Israel. People completely disconnected from the outside world are the most vulnerable to torture and mistreatment. Satellite images provide further insight into activities at uh, Taiman, revealing that in the months since the start of the Israeli-Hamas war on October 7th, more than 100 new structures, including large tents and hangars, have been built at a desert camp. 
The comparison of aerial photographs from September 10th to March 1st this year also showed a significant increase in the number of vehicles at the facility, indicating an uptick in activity. Satellite images from two dates in early December showed construction work in progress. CNN also geolocated the two leaked photographs showing the enclosure holding the group of blindfolded men in gray tracksuits. The pattern of panels seen in the roof matched with those from the large hangar and the satellite imagery. The structure, which resembles an animal pen, is located in the central area of the compound. It is an older structure seen among new buildings which have appeared since the war began. Isn't that so weird that uh, with modern technology, it's harder to hide this shit? It is way, way hard to hide this shit. It is very, it was very painful. When I was released, people expected me to miss them, to embrace them, but there was a gap, said Alran. The people who were with me at the detention facility became my family. Those friendships were the only things that belonged to us. Just before his release, a fellow prisoner had called out to him, his voice barely rising above a whisper, and uh, Alran said. He asked the doctors to find his wife and kids in Gaza. He asked me to tell them that it is better for them to be martyrs. It is better for them to die than to be captured and held here. And that is the extent of the article. I can't add anything to, to that. There's no levity I can add to that situation. There is no context I can give that makes it better. There is nothing I can say that makes any of this look even remotely better than how it was portrayed in the article. This is cut and dry. This is the shit that happened to Jewish people in the camps. Or at the very least is escalating to that point. If you want to be pedantic and technical. And yet, as I said, there will be people in the comment section who are going to come th to the defense of the Israeli Defense Force and their police forces that have done this shit. I'm gonna hop off stream. It was pure chance that I timed my stream for a time where I would be very, very tired by the time I'm done. Now I'm just wired, exhausted, and pissed. So, we are going to raid out. We are going to go somewhere else. Thank you all for watching. I look forward to seeing your opinions in the comment section below. That's all I will say anymore on this fucking shit. Insert in the video tagline here. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here, and they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Nixie Chan, The Oberon Team, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Curatorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagittarius, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.